Hi everyone, welcome back to Eid Vlog. Thank you so much for all your lovely wishes, prayers and blessings. Was really happy to read all the messages. I had been putting a few stories on the dress I was stitching. If you're following me on Instagram, you'd have seen those. In this pandemic time, it's not easy to go shopping and try out the dress you want. And online shopping, I do fear of the size. It may be right or wrong. You can't predict the right size to arrive. Having that thought, I bought a sari of the print I always love. That's floral print. Taking measurements is a big challenge for me. Hence, I took my old maxi dress, which is really simple. I took the measurements on the lining cloth and cut that first because the sari was crepe material that it would just flow and not remain in place. So I folded the cotton lining in four and marked the shoulder, then goes the chest and armhole. Cutting the back side first because the neck and the armhole in the front needs a different cut. Now you get two piece, so each piece placed it on the sari. And what I did, instead of drawing, I pinned it up so that it remains in place and is easy to cut. That's my sewing machine. Singer simple 3232. Sew from one side of the shoulder and along the neck till the other shoulder. Give small cuts so that it's neat when turned to the right side. Now stitch on this side. This is the back side that has not been turned. You may turn and then stitch joining the shoulders or place the one that's turned into the inside of the other. I don't know why but I like this way as it's neat. Now you turn and you get this. Stitch over here. For the sleeves, I did want lining but not cotton, so I used the blouse piece as the lining. And I love balloon sleeves, so try that too. Mark 3 inch away at the bottom of the armhole and shape the sleeve. I have folded the material in half. The bottom measure is twice bigger than the normal size. Open and cut the front sleeve a little bit inside to give the shape. Again place this on the other and pin it up. Join to the armhole and make sure you're placing the front sides together. More than the stitching, I took so much time in pinning up. 
but I had to do it or else I know the dress won't come perfect. When you join you get this. To the bottom side I wanted to keep elastic so I folded twice and stitched as per the width of the elastic I have. Once you have stitched the bottom, insert the elastic using a safety pin. Check the size of the sleeve bottom that you exactly need and then sew the ends with the elastic. Now join the ends and you get your beautiful sleeve. For the armhole, I kept my old kurti on it and marked the exact size. This applies to the rest. I like to give slits on both sides of the gown rather than joining the hole, hence giving slits. That's where you need to fold. For easy stitching, I marked 1 inch and drew so that the fold comes even. So that's complete. Now when I tried the dress, the length was just right but I wanted a little more and since it was plain, I thought to give pleats with another piece and then sew it at the bottom. I had seen this tip in so many tutorials in YouTube, it's pleats with a fork. It's really simple and can be done neatly. To give a border, I sewed with a red sheet material. Took measurements and drew a line so that it's easy to stitch on the line. And then folded the ends. And there it is. On the back side, again gave pleats, measured the length and folded. Finally, to make it neat, iron the dress. And now it's ready. I actually felt there was something missing, so on the waist area, I stitched a red strap. Pinning up the strap, then folded and stitched. And there it was. Finally a rinse and left it for drying. On the day before Eid would be cleaning and organizing to welcome Eid and I love rearrangements. My money plan grew quite well so I hung it back on the macrame to see the plan hanging.
I have a craft video on this macrame so if you want to know how to make it do watch that video When I rearrange, I really feel happy not just with the new look, the house gets a deep clean too. You get lots of treasures under the sofa when there are kids at home, would see missing items too. I put my kids story books over to this rack as their cabinet had less space to put their books and other stuff. That's my another DIY ironing board. I had once shown this in my dining room makeover. Shall link it below in the description box. Bought these chair pads from IKEA and it was really comfortable now. I always took more care in keeping my kitchen and dining area. Never bothered about the bedroom, master as well as kids. Gave a slight change by adding two cushions and changing the sheets. The area in this house that gets dirty really quickly is the wash basin where we brush our teeth. So I need to keep it clean almost on a daily basis. While I was cleaning, my husband cooked pasta for dinner. 
When he cooks a dish, there would be lots of cashews in it because he loved the crunch of cashews in any dish. After cleaning and having dinner, I moved to the kitchen for preparing and getting ready for Eid. I'm not a big fan of cheesecake and I don't like the biscuit base. So I searched Google on how to make the base soft and not that biscuit crumble. So I got to see brownie cheesecake. I anyway had a ready mix for brownies, hence thought to give a try. This is a cheesecake that need to be baked. And I personally love the baked type rather than the no bake one. I shall share a simple recipe you could use as the base. Do check my description box. Line a springform tin, mine is 30 cm. Pour the brownie batter in it and bake in a preheated oven at 180 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes. Into a mixing bowl, add 600 grams cream cheese. Beat till really smooth. Meantime, the base is ready. Keep it aside. Into the cream cheese, add half cup sugar, one tablespoon cornstarch, one teaspoon vanilla essence. I forgot to switch on the camera. I had added one cup sour cream too. I had frozen strawberries with me, so using that, you may use fresh by chopping them. I mashed it lightly. Then add it to the cream cheese and fold in few times. Pour the cream over the brownie. Now bake the cake at 150 degrees Celsius for 45 minutes. My husband was preparing his favorite kheer while I moved on to the next that included cleaning the kitchen as well. After the cake has finished baking for 45 minutes, off the oven and leave the cake inside the oven for again another 45 minutes. That's preparation going on for the biryani. I had made the biryani in large quantity to share it with our friends staying nearby. I shall give the measurements for 1 kilo biryani in the description box. After 45 minutes, the cheesecake is taken out. I'll be slicing this next day, but if you're slicing it on the same day, make sure it has completely cooled down. Many of you had asked me the food processor I use. I had shown this many times, showing once more. I use Philips food processor and I love it so far. It's my lifesaver. You need to use this blade for slicing onions. Close the lid and pass the onion through here. On the processor and push. You get thinly sliced onion. To grind ginger, garlic and green chilies, a different blade is used.
While the onions were frying, I prepared a simple pineapple pudding. Into a mixing bowl, add 1 cup whipping cream along with 2 sachets Dream Whip. When you use the cream and powder, you get a good texture for the whipped cream. To this goes fresh cream. Add 1 tin condensed milk and mix for a minute on medium speed. I used tin pineapple here so don't throw away the syrup. In case you are using fresh pineapple, chop the pineapple into pieces, cook them with sugar and enough water and then you can use that water. Here's Mary biscuits. Dip the biscuits in the syrup and place it in the tray as a bottom layer. Instead of biscuits, you may use cake slices. Place it in the tray and drizzle some of the syrup onto each cake slice. Add some pineapple pieces on top. Then pour some cream. Spread all over. Now repeat. Place this in the refrigerator. This is a very creamy delicious pudding. Don't forget to try this out. Now for the chicken marination, I added the fried onion, ginger garlic green chilli paste, chopped tomatoes, chopped mint and coriander leaves, garam masala powder, turmeric powder, coriander powder, Curd, salt, that's lemon juice and chicken pieces. Mix well and I kept it out in a cool place until next day. Before going to bed, I made sure my kitchen is well clean, so I wake up to a clean kitchen for all the preparations for Eid. Like every day, it was a beautiful morning on Eid. I was not sure if that much chicken would evenly cook in a large pot on the stove. Took some of the chicken from it and put in another pot. Covered and kept it on medium flame till the chicken was almost done but not completely because the rest of the cooking would be done while putting on them. I prepared ghee rice and then layered on top of the chicken masala. Garnished with some coriander leaves and fried onions.
Before having our food, I packed the lunch for our friend. And it was time for food. We normally have biryani as a brunch on Eid. Don't prepare anything for breakfast on Eid days. In case of getting late, then would have a banana or bread or anything simple. I normally plan to prepare some other dish on Eid. This time it was fried rice and chili chicken, but finally end up in biryani. Me and my husband really love biryani on Eid. However, other dishes we love. I had fried some cashews and raisins to garnish. and it's good to get that crunch while having the biryani Pass a knife so that it's easy to remove the cake from the tin, and that's the cheesecake. Placed it on the table to have it later. You may add a ganache to make it extra rich, but not necessary. This itself is delicious. After the heavy brunch, we all took a short nap. and got up for coffee and the sweets I normally don't add sugar in coffee while having it with pastries or any sweets I feel it's just like having dates with gava On that day my brother my cousin who I hadn't seen since lockdown came over while he and his friends were passing to Dawam so for them on the way to have I packed some pudding and cheesecake Later that day we went out for just a drive so getting ready and let me show you my dress while wearing it I won't say it has come out really perfect but I have tried my maximum with all the patience I have and pretty happy with the output
It was an hour drive through the city and was quite refreshing. Got back and had our dinner. I couldn't put henna on my hand the previous day, so put on the Eid day. The designs I put are almost the same every time. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Don't forget to share how you spend your Eid day. Do try the recipes as well and let me know your feedback. See you with another video. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.